I think the pallet garden represents um, a really good example of what I'm going to call vertical thinking. So thinking outside the square um, and basically instead of growing along the ground, if in some places we have um, limited space, so it's much better to go vertical. So, uh, and I think in this site is very flat uh, and this actually will stand out a lot, this garden. Um, and people will notice it from far away and these plants will fill that space and it'll look less like a pallet and more like a wall of plants. Okay, so what you'll see here is Jordan actually sliding cardboard through on the, the facing side of the, uh, the pallet and this is to secure the, the soil in so that the soil stays tight and compacted and um, protects the, the plants as much as possible when the plants are in. He's now going to just grab the staple guard and staple it into place which also helps to assist the soil remaining compact. Um. Putting weed matting down on the back of the pallet now, cutting it to size and stapling it on um, to hold the soil in. Hopefully it will be strong enough. Yeah. So we just decided to stand this one up, peg it into the ground, with the cardboard already attached and what this young man's doing right now by the name of Jay is trying to get soil. Is he's filling it with soil. Uh, so we've got the compost here that um, was created out of the hot compost that we did a couple of months ago. Um, and so we sifted it on the bed and so this will provide our soil mix with phosphorus and nitrogen um, which will help the plants. So the compost is alive, it's, um, it's, a, it's a living organism and you'll see if you look closely there's critters through there. So it should be alive with, um, with bugs. Cocoa peat here which is for retention so it will um, retain the water within the soil mix. And we've got the sand here, so the sand will do the same. It more helps with drainage. The sand mix, and then the soil mix here is good old dirt, which provides the minerals for the things that we need. So this is our mix of soil that we used. Can you remember what it was, Jay? Uh, five compost, four sand, one soil, and one cocoa peat. Yeah. yeah, this is our mix. We're going to go in there and nourish our plant to grow. At the same time, we hope not to lose any of the soil. So the best way to do it, what we realised through doing this one first laying down, was that in standing it up vertically and filling it with soil, first the soil mix from the bottom to the top, that was going to be the best, um, best practice of planting it. And the reason why is that it wasn't going to disturb the soil, it was going to allow the soil to just sink and stabilise in there and then with the cardboard backed up against the front of the pallet, we could then just cut a hole with the blade through the cardboard and go straight in and plant straight into the soil by that way. And yeah, that wasn't going to disturb the soil as much as it did with this one where we planted it laying down and then had to pick it up and shake it about a bit. So. Um, so I can just show you a planting method with the vertical stand-up pallet garden. So we've got lemon balm and strawberries in here already and um, I'm just going to put another strawberry in. So we're limited with space when it comes to actually planting in, in these holes here. There's a bit of fiddling around in regard to pulling back some of the, the soil life around the, um, the seedling, the roots. And then Bob's your auntie strawberry, look at that!
And then when it comes to uh, choosing another spot, we just grab a blade, just cut across in there, just dig a bit of a hole. We're ready to put something else in there, and just to allow for for roots, um, you might want to offset them wherever you choose to plant them so that the, the roots can spread out and there's a bit of space for them to grow. To care for the pallet garden we want to water them in um, kind of daily until they're established and then maybe and once a month uh, like give them some the liquid fertilizer yeah, like exactly. um, worm juice or sea salt and just make sure they're hydrated enough. Um, from day to day and um, we're just going to with this oregano try and as it grows train it down this side just so that it's covering the black plastic on that side to make it more aesthetic and um, same with these guys they might need to be trained a little bit but other than that it's all good. They're loving us right now. So if you're like me, you've already looked at tens of videos out there for how to build a pallet compost bin. And uh, I'm no different from the others except that really I kind of mixed all of those ideas into one. Uh, I'm a homeowner. As you can see I have neighbors behind and across and so there was a few rules that I had to follow through with. And that's important for someone to point out. No one ever brought it up in the videos but unfortunately there are some homeowners associations that are kind of anal to the point where maybe you can't build one so you might want to find out first before you go into the project. Following through though because I wanted to make sure I wouldn't have any issues from my neighbors if you look right there that's where it is. It's not very prevalent and I did it on purpose. This is my version of how to build a compost bin. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly so if you have any questions comment me, email me, I might miss something and you want to know about it and I will do everything in my power to make sure I educate you. I just don't want to waste your time with this video. First things first, it took four pallets to make this structure you're looking at right now. There's the four pallet and then the three around. One thing that I want to point out is right here you notice that I did the outside pallets on the outside of the main flooring model. The other thing I want to point out is that the only thing that's actually putting all of this together is that angle bracket right there. There's one on the bottom over here and then vice versa on the other side. And that is it. That is the whole rigidity of the structure of this. But because I didn't want my neighbors to see all of this, because to me, that is a beautiful composting start right there. Mmm, beauty. But you know what? To anyone else, that looks like trash in a box. So I created this door. It latches on right here and there's one on the bottom and it basically hides it. Now this is gonna be painted black eventually too so that it follows through with the rest of the color scheme that I'm trying to follow through with. Why did I paint it black? Well, it's the reason why I started the video with myself all the way over there. I wanted you to see that it's not very easy to see when it's back of the yard. I'm just trying to be nice to the homeowners around so that way they don't have to look at a giant, you know, trash bin for grass and stuff. Following through, the chicken wire was pretty easy to put on. Um, believe it or not, you can actually get chicken wires at the proper width of the actual pallet. So all you do is spread the chicken wire on, use a staple gun, and bam, you got everything put together when it comes to actually putting that on there. A few details when it comes to the actual compost itself. Remember, green and brown is fine, but nothing animal, nothing dairy. Chicken eggs are fine, but you have to wash them out. Uh, 
you just don't want to have anything that can go rancid inside of there because that's where the stinking comes from now for any reason this brown and green mix stinks that's just because there's too much water in there easy fix get some soil get some old compost get some dead leaves whatever stick it in there and stir it and within that day that stink goes away because what's causing the dead smell is just the bacteria that's anaerobic and in essence, you just need to stir it a little bit more often. So once every three weeks, once every month, it's not a bad deal. If you have any questions when it comes to the development of this, all you have to do is send me a comment and I'll answer anything. Uh, again, I wanted to make this overly simplistic because I know that you already have an idea in your head just like I did. This was not complicated. It, it took me a week to do, and the reason why was I was being a little lazy on the painting aspect of it. Thank you very much, and I hope that this was educational. I found this little board bean growing upside down. It was amazing, it was growing like that, just in this little pot here. Um, and I just threw a load of seeds into um, but it. It was growing upside down and trying to flip itself around. It's amazingly clever. But you can see they're so, their roots are so long. They've got these huge long roots. Look at that. This easily as tall as the plant in the roots. It's amazing. So we're going to plant them out. A little bit more space to grow. Beans and um, massive roots and just a strong look about them into the top of this um, pallet garden that um, I've planted potatoes in the bottom and now I'm thinking this is the same this is the same compartment as this one so it all shares the same textile kind of pocket so I was thinking of actually serrating a few slices in there and putting some extra beans in because while their roots are really long they're not going to take up this entire space and if they do then it inhibits the growth of the plants at the top so I'm just I reckon I'm gonna do that actually it should be quite it should get loads out of there get another six in at least and then that would be really nice because you can trail them up and kind of disguise the um, courtyard, the flat. So hopefully, yeah, let's give that a try. So with these ones, I've just been I've been slicing horizontally, and then just a, a triangle up. Oh, there's a little beam in there. Um, and instead of just slicing out a kind of half moon chunk, doing it this way is really great because um, this this particular geotextile membrane is really lovely and thick and actually provides a fantastic frost blanket for them. So if it does suddenly get really, really cold, as long as they're sheltered, they should be okay. Look at that. These are just a few that I've dug out of the pot that I had inside and there are four, five little plants in total and it just shows you how resilient they are and they're just so easy to grow like it's, it's, it's just so straightforward. Love it, they're brilliant little things. 